DiscerningHearts.com. In cooperation with the Missionary Benedictines of Christ the King Priory presents The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual path for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildi. Father Mauritius did his philosophical, theological, and doctoral studies in Europe. He is the author of numerous books, including I Want to Understand You, Encountering Foreign Worlds with a Little Prince, The New Image of God's Image, Meister Eckhart on Image and Theology, Peter and Paul, Models of Decision-Making, and On the Way, Benedict's Journey for Spiritual Maturity. Father Mauritius serves as the prior of St. Anselm's in Rome. The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual path for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildi. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Father Mauritius, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. We're discussing the Holy Rule of St. Benedict and in place of relativism, healing consequences. Right. Maybe in order to give you a taste how St. Benedict sees those consequences and how they can be healing for the confrere, for the brother, I read to you one chapter. This is uh, chapter 27, The Abbot's Concern of the Excommunicated. The abbot must exercise the utmost care and concern for wayward brothers. Because it is not the healthy who need a physician, but the sick. Therefore, he ought to use every skill of a wise physician and send in senpecte, that is, mature and wise brothers, who under the cloak of secrecy may support the wavering brother, urge him to be humble as a way of making satisfaction, and console him, lest he be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. Rather, as the Apostle also says, let love for him be reaffirmed, and let all pray for him. It is the abbot's responsibility to have great concern and to act with all speed, discernment and diligence in order not to lose any sheep entrusted to him. He should realize that he has undertaken care of the sick, not tyranny over the healthy. Let him also fear the threat of the prophet in which God says, What you saw to be fat you claimed for yourselves, and what was weak you cast aside. He is to imitate the loving example of the good shepherd who left the ninety-nine sheep in the mountains and went in search of the one sheep that had strayed. So great was this compassion for its weakness that he mercifully placed it on his sacred shoulders and so carried it back to the flock. I think we can sense the warmth and the care that Benedict's, Benedict has towards the confreres who are difficult or who have problems with the rule or with the community. So the overall tone is care, care for the sick, care for those who are weak. So all these chapters, as I mentioned, 23 to 30, who address the sanctions and punishments, have the goal to find a way how to heal the brother. It's about healing. So when we talk about sanctioned in a community, this is not about revenge, not about strictness, not about the law, or to confirm the rule of the law. It's about healing the brother. This is the, the main intention that Benedict has for us. It's primarily to address actions 
that are taking that they, there causes a a breach then something that causes a a breaking down of either trust or relationship within the community that has to be addressed mm -hmm. and so just as for all of us out in the world mm -hmm. there when we engage in actions that cause a break of trust that violate certain things we too should anticipate in a loving way those consequences so that it it can be healed the relationship whether it's in family or with friends or community can be healed yes it is not so much about re-establishing justice because we as christians believe that our judge is christ and he will come at the end of the world it's not up to, uh, it's not up to us to judge it's more about how can we help one another to come back to the community, to be again a good member of the community, to be a part of it. This is the purpose. And so the consequences, the, the, can we call it the penance, the, the action that needs to be instituted for a remedy That is done, it, it's almost like a physician's prescription for an illness. Right. This is how Benedict sees it, at least. So it's not about there's the rule, and you haven't followed the rule, and now you have to draw the consequences. The rule is not a goal in itself. The rule of St. Benedict is nothing else than the application of the Holy Scriptures of the Gospel to the life of the, of the monk, to the monastic life in the community. So the law, if you want to say so, is the gospel. This is the highest authority. And when we look at Jesus, that was his, his deepest wish, that everybody would become holy and healthy. Maybe I make it a little bit more concrete and mm -hmm. also sh try to show how Benedict wanted to go about with, and practically <laughs> with those situations. We can, for example, take chapter 23, excommunication for faults. If a brother is found to be stubborn or disobedient or proud, if he grumbles or in any way despises the holy rule and defies the orders of his seniors, he should be warned twice, privately by the seniors, in, a co in accord with our Lord's injunction. If he does not amend, he must be rebuked publicly in the presence of everyone. But if even then he does not reform, let him be excommunicated, provided that he understands the nature of this punishment. If, however, he lacks understanding, let him undergo corporal punishment. We see in this passage different steps or levels of sanctioning. Of punishment, if you so, if you will, the first step would be the warning. So, if the abbot sees something that is not good, just he ought to give this brother an admonition privately, as Saint Benedict says, which protects the brother, and he hopes certainly that after this admonition, the brother will amend. If this does not work, he should try it a second time. If this does not work, and we see that there were cases when it didn't work like this, so you say something, you say it again, nothing happens, nothing changes, the brother just don't seize his fault or doesn't want to improve his life. The next step would be 
if he does not amend, he must be rebuked, rebuked publicly in the presence of everyone. This is a strong means, you know. If you have the other brothers present, then this really puts some pressure on this respective brother. He is easier to be ashamed for what he has done. But again, it's a strong means. But the intention is to heal this brother from his fault. It's, it's like a good doctor who has to do a surgery. It's not a nice thing if you cut off the, the body or make a cut and the blood is flowing out and everything. So it's not a nice thing. Mm -hmm. It's hurting. And nowadays we have our means to, to not... Um, and with narcotics we... We don't feel the, the pain anymore, but basically you the doctor has to has to vulnerate or to, um, to do some harm to the body in a way in order to reach um, a higher how can I say in order to reach the root of the illness and to heal and to cure it. So this is a strong means, the public admonition. And then the last step actually is the excommunication, which is a strong thing. That means that the brother would not eat together with the community, not pray together with the community, even to the point they, that he would have to leave the community for good. In a minute, I will share with you how we do it today in our communities. Mm -hmm. But let I just try first to understand the text, so to speak, and the, 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 the rule itself. So excommunication. And, but here, very interesting, Benedict says, provided that the brother understands the nature of this punishment. <laughs> Maybe he sees it as an award. <laughs> to, mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have to live in the monastery anymore. That's nice. If this would be the case, that would be the wrong means of, <laughs> means of, mm -hmm. of punishment. So St. Benedict tries to find a way that is fitting to the respective brother, to his character, to his capability. So he says if, if he lacks the understanding, let him undergo corporal punishment. This is interesting. So a corporal punishment, you can even feel direct, more direct, uh, more immediate. Okay, maybe this is then the moment when the brother wakes up and says, oh, I really did something wrong. If you just would exclude him from the community, maybe he still wouldn't feel what is going on. Mm -hmm. This whole passage is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. So this is really Holy Scriptures, what St. Benedict applies here to the, to the community. The sanction is adjusted to the need or cap capability of the individual brother. So in the focus, there's the brother, the human being, not the law, not the punishment. It's kind of the brother himself teaches you how he has to be treated. So you can feel here a, a, um, a great respect and also a great love for this brother. Although we are talking certainly about not nice things. Mm -hmm. But the fault or the misdeed was also not nice and did harm both the community and the brother. Maybe I give you an example uh, where I have experienced, where this, where this chapter were applied in our monastery or were realized. Actually, nowadays we do hard with these chapters, I must say. So we are, we are more than hesitant to, to punish at all because it's not, not in the line of what is politically correct, I would say, in a way, which is probably good. But I experience once a situation where I really understood the need for this kind of procedure. That was when a brother, who was the porter of the monastery, 
left the whole bunch of keys unguarded on the desk. He went off to do whatever. He came back and somebody had taken his keys, the bunch of keys. And this bunch contained all the important and main keys of the monastery. So in one strike, you can say, all security in the monastery was gone because after that we couldn't be secure anymore that this monastery was protected. So we didn't know who, who did take, who took these keys and so that was a big problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, at that time, this brother did not experience any punishment from the leadership of the monastery. But I can tell you, The contrast, the brothers were punishing him <laughs> because they were so angry with him. The reason is that it took a while until we had replaced all the locks of the monastery. It cost a lot of money and it took months until everybody finally had all keys for all, <laughs> for all locks. So it was really a time of chaos in the monastery <laughs> only because of this little slip of this brother. And what happened was that the, the confreres, the brothers, really picked on this poor brother. They really let him feel <laughs> that that was a fault, mm. even to the point to exclude him from their community, you know? And here we see the dynamics that is going on in a community and how these regulations and rules that St. Benedict gives us help to go the better route. So if this brother would have been punished in a proper way, maybe in front of everybody, would have done satisfaction. Maybe after that the brothers would have said, oh, it was not good, but now it's okay. Okay, he has apologized, he has done any kind of satisfaction, or any penance, now it's okay for us, we can continue. But because we didn't do this, the illness kind of even increased in the community. The cancer kind of spread, poisoned the atmosphere. It was horrible. And it was not good for the, for the community, and it was not good for this poor man, for this brother who, who, to whom this fault happened. happened and... So that was the very first time when I understood there is something to these chapters. There is something, there is some truth in it that is very important for community life. It wasn't good for the abbot as well for not interceding on behalf not only of the confrere but of the community yeah. to kind of be that bridge and mediate. Actually, to be honest, I, I don't know if he interfered maybe in private, maybe he gave an admonition, but this certainly was not enough at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but you're right. It also blames the leadership of the, of the community. A term that is maybe not as used anymore, um, maybe because it's no longer really understood properly, but the term scandal. Mm-hmm when behavior isn't checked. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's not called out. We experience that sometimes when uh, people in the church may feel they know somebody who has done something mm -hmm. that seems, and I'm going to preface all of this because we don't know, mm -hmm. but it seems as though there is a violation mm -hmm. of church teaching mm -hmm. Whatever the case might be, mm -hmm. to the person doing it, it seems like it's an okay thing. Mm -hmm. They don't have a problem with that. But those who are observing it creates scandal. Is that kind of, in a, in a way, do you think that's what this might be addressing as well? Oh, yes. The example you, you give us um, has different perspectives. One is that we have come to a point in our societies where we easily say, ah, forgive yourself, everything goes. This is what Pope Benedict 
the 16th named the relativism. It doesn't matter what I do. I do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I declare everything as good, whatever it is. Before I do it, while I'm doing it, after I have done it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So this is one part. St. Benedict has a different ethics. And I think this is the Christian ethics. Is, oh, sure, it has consequences what you do. Sure, you are responsible for what you do. You can either choose the way of life or the way of death or something in between, but you should always look for life. So this is one part of it, that I'm so glad that we have still these chapters in the rule because they remind us that not everything goes, everything is possible. But they open our eyes, as I explained in this example, what is really going on in a community, what is, what is the dynamics. It only appreciates the dynamics that are there. So the contrast excluded this brother. It would have been way better if the abbot would have said, and now you are excluded for maybe one week or whatever, or one day. That would be way more human. So to avoid those kind of consequences in general is just stupid. It is not human, has nothing to do with respect, with love, with human rights, whatever. So I think this is something we, we, should, we should really address if we see it in the society. The other side is what you said, those who see this and, and see it as a scandal, sure, because they are affected. And the more this one person thinks, oh, I am not affecting you, the more they feel <laughs> they are affected. The advantage of a small community like a monastery is that you can, that you can find means of healing for the whole group, for the whole community. This is more difficult in, let's say, in a parish, in a diocese, or in the whole church, because it's so complex. The edges are not so clear. The, the, how can I say it's not really so clear who belongs to the group and who doesn't. But the dynamics are the very same. Dynamics are the very same. And it would be the duty of, or the task for the good shepherd, for the pastor of this respective community. You can, ah, maybe let's take the example of a family. I think there it's maybe kind of easier to, to see what is going on because this is also a smaller group. And then it would be the the uh, task for the parents, for the mother, for the father, to find ways how the community can be cleansed again. And because, you know, when one brother starts to do something evil, it kind of affects the others. So when they are starting grumbling, when they are getting angry, put this anger into action. Other and worse things can happen. The evil is mostly not bound to one person only. It likes to spread, <laughs> it likes to, mm -hmm. to infect others. And so, as so far, it is so important to, to fight against the evil right in the beginning. And this is what Benedict does. It's also at the heart of the Catholic understanding of reconciliation, isn't it? And this goes back to Jesus. Jesus loved to forgive. Jesus came, the Son of God came to us in order to preach the reconciliation, in order to show us that God wanted to be reconciled with us again, and he wanted to reconcile us with him again. It's all about reconciliation, and this is what Jesus did. So he loved to forgive, he loved to, in, to, to carry the sheep, back to the to the flock, um, the one sheep that got lost. And these wonderful means that the church offers to us, the confession, the celebration of reconciliation, this really helps to establish to establish a new healthy community. 
In addition to these means of the church, in the monastery we have a special way. We have the so-called kulpa. This is this happens. This takes place two times a year, in Lent and in Advent. The whole community comes together, and everybody is free and invited to share what he thinks he did wrong, individually, but also within the community. So we kind of confess our shortcomings to the others. And this is extremely powerful. That is so powerful. And afterwards, there's such a joy. Because after these kind of confessions, it's not a sacrament of the confession, but this mm -hmm. kind of uh, confessing uh, things and actions and negligences, we pray together and ask the Lord for forgiveness and for reconciliation. And that really helps to start anew. So this has been proved as a very, very, very good means to, to heal the community and also to cleanse it. But the advantage of living in a community, in a family, in a parish, in a monastic community is that the other brothers right away mirror us what was wrong. And that gives us the chance to grow. And in our communities, we are all sinners. Pope Francis recently said that, I am a sinner. And he repeated it. I know I am a sinner. That was so touching for me, I must say. And I believe him. <laughs> and I know myself. When we see our shortcomings, not as a big problem, but just as a reality that happen over and over again, but be honest to deal with it in the community, to seek reconciliation, then it can really be a means for spiritual growth and to become healthy again. Thank you so much, Father Mauritius. You're welcome. You've been listening to The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, a spiritual path for today's world with Father Mauritius Fildi. To hear and or to download this program, along with hundreds of other spiritual programs, visit DiscerningHearts.com. This has been a production of DiscerningHearts.com. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope if this has been helpful for you that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to support our efforts. But most of all, we ask that you tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for The Holy Rule of St. Benedict, A Spiritual Path for Today's World with Father Mauritius Fildi.